Hi, today we're talking to Dr. Tina Feely. She is a board certified pediatrician through the American Board of Pediatrics. Currently, she is practicing as a general pediatrician in Virginia. She did her undergraduate degree at Boston College and then went on to Dartmouth, where she received a master's in public health from the Dartmouth Institute for Health Policy and Clinical Practice. She then went on to medical school at Rutgers University at the Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, where she graduated with honors. She completed her pediatrics residency at the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters in Norfolk in Virginia and she lives in Virginia with her husband and her daughter. Today's topic that we're talking to Dr. Tina Feely about is reflux. Welcome, Tina. First of all, can you just walk us through your motherhood journey? Was it easy for you or was it difficult? Or can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of my motherhood journey, we had, I, um, you know, was a pediatrician and a graduated residency prior to becoming a mom. And um, my husband and I are actually both pediatricians. So um, I think we both knew what we were getting ourselves into in terms of, you know, babies waking up every two hours to feed and um, and that our life was going to change a lot. But I think that um, even being two people who arguably are, you know, more uh, qualified to have children than you could imagine, um, I don't think anything truly prepares you to become a mom um, or a dad in that case for him. But um, especially the sleep thing was, was honestly the, the biggest kind of struggle because our daughter did not sleep for more than 45 minutes at a time for about two months. And um, it really got to be draining and feeling like, you know, am I really going to be able to do this? Um, even as a pediatrician. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, the joys of, of motherhood have just been something that I could have never imagined being this happy or having so many highs at the same time. Um, but it definitely was not as easy as I thought it would be even being someone who knew that it was going to be kind of difficult to begin with too. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't think anything can really prepare you what, for what you're in for after the birth. I think even, even as you said, you know, you, you'd seen all of the things that can happen, um, but still nothing quite prepares you yourself. Yeah. It's like you know, you know, in theory, what waking up every two hours is going to be like, or that someone, another human is solely responsible, you're solely responsible for all of their care. But I don't think you truly understand what it is until you're living it. So um, yeah. it's been, it's been a great experience overall. <laughs> Just <like> the initial. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So being a pediatrician, what are the most um, commonly dealt with issues that you you come across? Um, so I would say uh, the biggest questions that parents have when they come in to see me, um, one is definitely involving sleep. How much sleep should their baby be sleeping? How strategies to get them to sleep and things like that. Um, the other one is definitely feeding. So in terms of what to feed, how much to feed, how much the baby should be taking or a child should be eating. Um, and then, uh, also about growth and development. So what should the child be doing at that age versus what they are doing is what they're doing normal. Is it not normal? So I think, uh, those are probably the three major things. And then obviously I see the um, everyday colds and asthma and, and things like that. Um, but in terms of the questions that parents have, it's usually regarding sleep, feeding, and and growth and development. Right, right. So talking about reflux now, we know some babies can be maybe misdiagnosed or yeah, um, diagnosed with reflux when potentially they're actually overtired or maybe undertired. Um, can you talk me a little bit through that? And do you see this yourself? 
Um, I think so. Um, I don't know necessarily that it's that they're overtired or undertired, but I think the main things with children with reflux and babies who are overtired and babies who are undertired is they all are kind of a little fussy. And um, reflux is one of those things that almost all babies do, especially in the first three months of life. Um, just the nature of how uh, the baby's anatomy is. So the uh, esophagus, which brings the food from your mouth to your stomach, um, and the and your stomach have in adults a sphincter, which is like a valve, which keeps food in your stomach and keeps it from coming back up. But babies, it's not really developed until later. So almost all babies, it's just kind of an open tube between their mouth and their stomach, and um, and they'll reflux. And so a lot of fussy babies, because they are parents will notice that they're refluxing or notice that they're spitting up a lot, they kind of associate that with the reflux, even though it might not actually be the reflux, it might be that they are fussy for another reason, it might be that they're overtired, it might be that they're undertired, but because this is something that's happening all day, every day, for the majority of babies, I think that's something that people often attribute to a fussy child. Right. Right. And I guess it's also whether the reflux itself is actually causing, like after the spitting up is actually causing pain, or if they're just spitting up and then they're going on about their life as a happy little baby as well. Exactly. Exactly. So I think sometimes parents will, you know, attribute what they're seeing and what they're seeing is the act of them spitting up, even though that's actually not what's causing them to be fussy at all. It could be something else that's going on such as right. being overtired or something else. Exactly. That's really good. Um, so what are the key symptoms that people or parents should be looking out for with reflux and when should they seek some professional help or when should they come and see you? Yeah, I mean, I would say in general, if you ever have a concern about your baby, go to your doctor. So <laughs> there's never anything that I would say is not worthy to come to me and ask a question. You get all sorts of questions. And even if I tell you that everything is normal, that's okay. That's worth my time. Um, but in terms of, of reflux, that would be causing an, you know, an issue for the baby. So it is causing pain. So some of the signs of that, um, it's an emergency if the reflux or the spit up is ever red or green. So that means that there's either blood in it or bile in it. And that is always an emergency where you just go straight to the emergency room. Um, if the spit up is projectile after every single feed. So what I mean by that is it's literally like shooting across the room at, with every single feed. Um, then that's a concern that you should definitely go straight to the emergency room for too. Because you don't want your baby to get dehydrated or, or see if other things are going on. Um, and then in terms of the spit up, that's not necessarily an emergency, but you need to talk to your, um, pedi you should talk to your pediatrician or your doctor about, um, are things where you're noticing that your baby isn't feeding well, or they're refusing their bottles or they're spitting up and, um, seeming like they're in pain while they spit up at the same time. Um, that would all be something that, uh, is a sign that it's more than just spit up. Yeah, definitely. My um, myself, I was um, a projectile baby, and uh, mm -hmm. I used to apparently hit the other side of the room. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh god! Yeah, yeah. yeah it, can be, it can be disconcerting, especially for parents. Um, a lot of times, parents will come in and and say, "Oh my goodness!" But it's coming out of their nose, and I'd say, "Well, it's." actually normal, everything is connected back there. So if it's coming out of their nose, that's not necessarily abnormal, but if it's forceful after every feed, it is. And one thing that babies do, especially when they're in pain, is not only will they um, cry when they spit up, but they'll kind of do something, they'll arch their back, and they'll sometimes get really stiff. And, and it's really concerning to see because sometimes it'll even cause them to kind of take a pause breathing and things like that. So if you ever see that, then that's definitely a reason to go to your doctor and, and to seek help. But um, but if your baby is spitting up and what we call reflux, but it's not reflux disease, not, um, but if they're just spitting up and you didn't even notice, they didn't cry, you just happen to look in their bassinet and, and they have some, you know, spit up on their sheet or something like that, but they're just living their life and totally happy and they're feeding well and gaining weight and growing, then it's not something generally you need to worry about. But again, always, Talk to your doctor or your pediatrician if you're 
uh, ever concerned about anything your baby is doing. Yeah, definitely. So how does reflux affect a baby's sleep? So um, reflux can affect a baby's sleep in that um, generally it's going to be worse when the baby is laying flat on their back. So with that said, we always want a baby to be flat on their back on a separate firm sleep surface for safe sleep. Um, but when a baby has reflux, that's always going to be a position where they um, can make the, the actual spit up worse in that it's coming up from the stomach to the mouth because they're laying flat on their back and they're not having gravity help keep it in their stomach. So one thing that we always recommend that parents do um, is after they feed their baby, if they do have a baby with reflux and, and the spit up is hurting them, um, to make sure they burp their baby in between their feeds. So if they're nursing between each breast to burp their baby or if they're bottle feeding um, after you know, every ounce or two to, to burp them and then to actually sit them up and hold them up for about 30 minutes after the feed. And that can oftentimes help. So that way, by the time you put the baby back on their back on their firm flat sleep surface for um, their safe sleep, that at least they've kind of digested some of the milk a little more so it won't be coming right back up. But we still always emphasize sleep, safe sleep so that they're sleeping, you know, on their back on a separate sleep surface because we don't want them sleeping um, inclined or in an unsafe positioner for the reflux itself. Right. And so if a baby is diagnosed with reflux that is needs to be medicated, how does the medication work and what should parents expect to see as a yeah. result? Mm -hmm. So in terms of the medicines, there's, there's two different types of medicine, but they both act um, against the acid part of the reflux. So it's not going to stop the reflux from happening because reflux is really just spit up and you still don't have that valve between the esophagus and the stomach to keep the food in the stomach. Um, so the food's still going to come up, the milk's still going to come up and go down and come up and go down. But that the, the um, medicines do is they prevent the acid so that it makes it less painful. So ideally, they turn from being a fussy infant with reflux to an infant with reflux that it really doesn't bother them um, is the goal. But the goal is not that it will actually stop the reflux itself or the spit up. The goal is that it will actually just stop the pain associated with it so that they won't be um, waking up and things like that. Uh, in terms of sleep, I know a lot of parents, it can be concerning when their baby spits up because they say, well, they're going to choke on it because they're lying on their back and then they spit up. But actually, it is safer for them to be on their back than on their stomach because your um, food pipe is behind your, your windpipe. So it's, your esophagus is behind your trachea. So actually, when you're laying on your back, they're more likely to just re-swallow it than um, if you're laying on their tummy. So that's another thing for parents to keep in mind that it is actually still safer for them to be on their back, even though they're still getting that kind of spitting up um, throughout the night and everything. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. It's been really informative and I hope that um, everyone's learned something about reflux and head to your doctor or GP or your pediatrician if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Tina. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks.